today's video dedication is for Whiskey Jack. Minsk and Boo versus Urza Chief Artificer. And thanks to the Mox Diamond and the Bushwhack, we should be able to get down a turn 2 Minsk and Boo, which is typically what we want to do in this deck, get down our commander as soon as possible, because it is capable of so much damage and card draw. Our opponents on the play gets into a turn 1 land and a Nile Spell Bomb. And we draw into a Shattering Spree against an Artifact player is pretty good, so throw down the Mox Diamond first of all. Discard the Forest to that, because the Mox will make any colour. And then it can be a green into the Arbor Elf. And the Fetch can make a Tiger, so that we can untap that with the Arbor Elf, and it can make either colour. And then the Tiger can tap for green this turn. So it's Bushwhack, not going to do any fighting obviously. That can just be a basic for next turn. And we'll make that a forest because again we can untap that with the Arbor Elf. It's Vamp Tutor during the upkeep from our opponent. And then dropping an Urza Saga. So that might have been what he tutored for. Our opponent did ask for power level 8 to 9. And yeah, it looks like he's following through with that plan. Okay, we draw a Bolt Land in Shatter Skull Smashing. It can just be the forest this time. Not sure if I want to bolt that down. So uh, play and tap the forest, untap it with the Arbor Elf. And it's straight in for our turn 2 Minsk and Boo. <laughs> yep, it's a strong deck alright, Force of Will against our commander. Uh, they exiled, wow, a Pact of Negation. So one card left in hand, but we're quite a ways away from our commander now. Our opponent just plays a land and passes, so probably holding up the Construct on the Urza Saga. We draw into Jeska, Thrice Reborn. So... Uh, Alright, so let's just get the Jeska in play. I'll encourage my opponent to dump mana into making the Constructs, because we can remove those anyway. Zero on the Jeska, pointed at the Arbor Elf. And yeah, they make the Construct in response. So now Arbor Elf on tapping the Tiger, and we'll throw out the Skull Clamp. And then the Shatter Skull can come into play tapped. And during the upkeep, in response to Chapter 3, our opponent makes another Construct, and then the... As a saga is going to get sacrificed, usually for a soul ring. And yep, it is a soul ring from our opponents, so they're not going to like the look of this shattering spree. Managing to get into an eco wellspring as well, so those constructs are five fives now. Going to save ourselves some life here though, because they will go in at the Vraska, or they should. All right, so Vraska down. And there's a galvanic blast for us. We do not have metal craft. I don't need it anyway here. Let's just dump four red mana into the Shattering Spree. Untap the Tiger with the Arbor Elf. Replicate the Shattering Spree three times. For a total of four red mana. And then a Construct getting targeted, the Sol Ring, and we'll go after the Nile Spell Bomb as well. Eco Wellspring will draw our opponent a card, and while he's only at two in hand, we obviously don't want that. Alright, so blowing up all of our opponent's stuff and sending him down to two mana. Did exile our graveyard in response with the Nile Spell Bomb, but doesn't really matter. Still able to do stuff though, and Azoria Signet. Still two cards in hand, but we top deck into a Mana Vault. That's really lucky, so go after the Minsk and Boo by turn five for a second time, and our opponent sees it coming, so just deciding to scoop it up on us. Playing against Tekuthal this time with. Uh, yeah, another pretty fast hand, so we'll keep that. We can get down a turn two commander with that. So we throw down the Chrome Mox again. We'll get rid of the Kessig Wolf run. That's more of an end game card for us. And then, uh, yeah, dropping a mountain so that we can go for the Goblin and Archimancer. And that will make pretty much all our spells in the deck cost one less. All of our coloured spells, anyway. Yep. Playing against a Seeker, and that is... We've got a Chrome Mox this time. <laughs> Alright, this is the only player in the lobby that got past turn one, so we'll try again against Urza. And that's a pretty stacked hand, so... We'll hope that we're actually going to see our commander by turn two. And this player is asking for power level eight to nine, so... Shouldn't be scooping to a bunch of fast mana and stuff, he should be expecting it. Obviously getting our rocks down, and a couple and gorge. <laughs> Jesus. Right, we'll try for a fourth time, fifth time. I'll lose count. Playing against Kazar this time with a one lander, but 
Again, we should get a turn two mint scout, which we usually aim to do here. Draw into a chain lightning, so it is a tiger uppercut for the arid mesa. And we'll get down the Finhorn Elves. Doesn't really matter if we get down the Bird of Paradise because we've got red in our tiger. And I don't want the Birds of Paradise to get burned out of the way by our opponent. But just getting down the commander on turn two. And swinging in at us for one point of evasive commander damage. Wouldn't have blocked with the Birds of Paradise anyway. I was hoping for another land there. We'll go for the Elvish Mystic. And then we can Chain Lightning onto the commander. And hopefully that will buy us a turn or two. Our opponent gets into a third land and has a Wizard's Lightning. So just hard casting that for three mana. And if we don't get a land off the top here, which we don't, then we're not going to be getting down our commander. So luckily we do have another Dork to play. And it is the Birds of Paradise. Successfully avoided the burn on that. And our opponent, continuing to make land drops, has a 4 drop for us. We've got 35 lands in this deck, but not managing to draw into them, unfortunately. A Jace's Sanctum. So looks as though we're going to be getting down our commander unless we run into free counter magic again. Alright, and there's the land for us, so I'll hold off on the Lotus Petal. Don't think we're going to need it. Shocking the stomping ground. And of course we will make the Hamster. Dump the plus counters on it. And a 4-4, swing it in. Again, not dealing commander damage. And maybe we can hold up the Lightning Bolt with the Lotus Petal, so I'll get that into play. Don't think I'm going to be using it on a Lightning Bolt though. They solve the equation from our opponent. Search your library for an instant or sorcery and put it into hand. And they will scry one. Not that that matters when they're about to tutor. Not worthy that they have a Shinka in play as well. And there is a Fall of the Titans. X damage to each of up to two targets. And that will cost one less. Only have three mana available here though. So they could get rid of our dorks. And that's exactly what they decide to do. So X is three. And uh, they're getting rid of our mana dorks here. This is the problem with dorks is that they're pretty fragile, but they can accelerate you ahead nicely, as we've seen in this game. And we just draw it into a flame slash. So I'm wondering if we should be sacrificing with the Minsk so that we can start making more ramp spells and land drops and stuff like that. So swing in with the boo for four points of damage. And then minus two on the Minsk before our opponent deals with it. And the four damage can go straight onto our opponent. And we will draw four cards here. Alright, so there's a land. Uh, get down the Grim Monolith as well. Got more ramp in the Simeon Spirit Guide as well. So I feel confident in being able to get our Minsk out again if needs be. So yeah, seven cards in hand. We can pass at that. Now comes the Kaiser again. So we'll probably force them to go for counter magic. Or actually they've tapped out all their blue mana, so that's quite telling. A Mage Right Stone, untap it. Uh, not bothered about that, we'll just go for the Lightning Bolt on the Kaiser at instant speed. One card in our opponent's hand, so they might scoop here. Doesn't seem like it though, so we'll make a boo at the beginning of the turn. And there is a Jeska's Will, so we're going to get some nice ramping card advantage out of that. Plus on the boo first. Drop a land. And I'll just swing in straight away here. We're not going to get too much mana from the Jeska's Will. And I'm quite liking what we've got in hand at the moment. No real need to go hunting for anything when we're only going to get one mana from our opponent. So we'll leave it at that and try and be reactionary. Hold up the Beast Within and the Endurance. Our opponent consistently making land drops. And there we see the Kaiser again. Flame Slash is a sorcery. So yeah, we'll let our opponent hit the Minsk and Boo. Wasn't looking to go for the card draw in that next turn anyway. And I'm going to hope that my opponent doesn't go for any flashback or anything. We'll go for the Endurance now. And shuffle everything from their graveyard. This obviously allows us to put more damage on our opponent. Right, drawing into Arcane Signet, I don't mind. Oh damn it, and I click through to the beginning of combat phase. That's annoying. Could have had some extra damage on my opponent. Because I was going to tick up onto the boo. Knocking our opponent down to 17. It should be 14. Anyway, get down the Arcane Signet and just continue to be reactionary. Well, our opponent's just top decking into lands apparently. That is a Grand Colosseum. We see a Robe of the Archmagi. Which is a really good one, but they're not going to be able to hit us with that. Equipping it for one onto a Wizard. 
and it is us that they have to hit. We'll just go for Beast Within onto the robe itself. That does give them a 3-3, but we've got some decent attackers that we can go in with. Might even be able to get our opponent next turn. I'm hoping that 3 damage isn't relevant. Probably Flame Slash the Beast token out of the way, actually. Alright, drawing to Sir Kenzin. Let's Flame Slash on our opponent's creature. Get the Beast token gone. And then we should be able to turn both of our creatures in sideways for 10 points of damage. Then minus down on the Minsk. And we will keep our Planeswalker in play because our opponent didn't swing in towards it last turn. And that will be 7 damage from this onto our opponent. They are empty handed so we know that we've got them here. So they decide to scoop. Yeah that was actually a complete game for once so I'm happy with that. I will try again and see if we can get another one. Up against a different user playing Urza this time. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. We can get a uh, Dryad Arbor out on turn one from the Green Sun Zenith. And we are on the play here. So it can be uh, Scalding Tarn for a Tiger. And then X is zero into the Green Sun Zenith. And obviously the Dryad Arbor is a land, so it has zero CMC. But that's a nice turn one ramp spell you can go for with the Green Sun Zenith. Which does get shuffled back into our library. So yeah, Mox Tantalite from our opponent hitting the Exile Zone with three time counters on it. And there's a Plains. So they could have the one mana counter spell. I wouldn't have thought an Esper player would play white counter spells. But maybe they'll try and trick us into throwing out our Minsk and Boo here. Which we are going to do. Ancient Tomb takes two life from us but will allow us to go for that. And it does enter. So we'll get the boot into play, dump the plus counters on it straight away and start whacking our opponent for damage to them in the red zone. A Hedron Crawler from our opponent. So not doing too well on the colours, only got access to white mana so far. Uh, that's another land for us. Couldn't draw into them before and now we're starting to get flooded. So that can be a plus counter onto the boot again. Uh, just throw out a Misty Rainforest and um, we'll swing in at our opponent, holding up the Bone Crusher Giant most likely. But our opponent's likely going to scoop sometime soon and yeah, if he's struggling on colours, can't really blame him. Alright, our opponent does get into a blue source though and there is a Dig Site Engineer. So we'll grab a tap land with the Misty Rainforest and then it can be the Stomp from the Bone Crusher Giant and that can go onto the rock. Okay, a Findhorn Elves for us. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to wonder about sacrificing the boo at this point. I'll leave it another turn, I think. We'll throw out the Bone Crusher Giant. Nice 4-3 to start landing damage on our opponent with. And then we can tap the Dryad Arbor to get out a Findhorn Elves. And I don't think we can dump plus counters on this. No, it doesn't have Trample or Haste, so... It's even more damage from the boo. Luckily for our opponent, it's not commander damage, like I've said a few times here. So a 10-10 swinging in through the 3-3. And that takes our opponent down to 19. We could probably win next turn, especially if we land damage on them with the boo. That'll take them down to 9, and then we throw boo at them with our commander. Mox Tantalite will enter play here. And they can put 2 into the dig site engineer, but that's not really going to do anything for them. We've been too slow here compared to what we're doing. There's a Mem Knight from our opponent, and they're going to put two into the Dig Site Engineer again, so yeah, starting to make some decent constructs. They've got four cards in hand, and those are four fours, so it's not the worst. We do have a Shattering Spree in hand, unfortunately for them. Yeah, so I can see what they were starting to look at doing. Lightning Bolt will get rid of the Dig Site Engineer as well. Don't think we need to do that here, though. Let's just drop the City of Brass. We can make... Four red mana, maybe just two so that we don't get rid of the Mox Tantalite and we can hold up the um, Lightning Bolt. So one damage from City of Brass, three mana into Shattering Spree, and we'll get rid of all of our opponent's artifact creatures. So Shattering Spree replicates twice there because we put the three mana into it, and our opponent's had a really rough time this game. Lightning Bolt onto the Dig Site Engineer as well. We've just had absolutely everything against them unfortunately. So swing in with Boo and the Bone Crusher Giant. And this is the power of Boo. We're about to refill our hand with sacrificing it to the Minsk. Alright, and the log is saying that our opponent's lost connection to the game, so he's probably just closed the client without conceding. So we will concede here to our opponent and 
draw a bunch of cards, see what we were getting into off the Minsk. Alright, so it's more mana and removal, basically. That's pretty much what the deck consists of. Well, the last game didn't go too well for our opponent, not a particularly fair game, so we'll play another one against Croxer this time, which is probably a pretty spiky deck, I would assume. They're on the play as well, so could get rid of that Mana Vault from our hand. You see a Ragavan Nimble Pilfer it on turn one. Obliterating Bolt is probably going to go on to the Ragavan, can't do it on turn one, unfortunately, so it can be a Tiger again to fix our colours which is good with a Reflecting Pool in hand. I'll throw down the Mana Vault, challenge them to get rid of that before turn two. And our opponent hits us for two with the Ragavan, throwing away a Beast Within very kindly. So they've got a land here, they can play that onto the Mana Vault. That's pretty unlucky, but I did say that our deck is pretty much removal and mana. And yep, yeah, they made green, so that's Beast Within. Uh, really going to slow us down. <laughs> That's unlucky. We get straight into a Mana Crypt off the top, so Reflecting Pool, Mana Crypt, and we're still getting down a Minsk and Boo on turn two. You can see why people don't want to play against this commander. So we've got a Beast token that we can throw in the way of the Ragavan now. So a bunch of plus counters onto the Boo, and that can start wailing away at our opponent. Really lucky to get into the rock off the top, but... We do have all the fast mana rocks, the Moxons and Jeweled Lotus and all the rest of them. So we are bound to draw into them more often than not. You see a Terminate onto the Beast token. There's worse targets for it, so Ragavan hits us. Going to make a treasure and exile off the top again. Just a Windswept Heath this time though. Can they play lands with the Ragavan? No, it's just casting with that, so... Instead, they play an Urborg from their own hand, and we might see the Croxer here. No, nope, it is a Grim Monolith, so up against an evenly matched player, apparently. And there we see a Galvanic Blast. We do not have Metal Craft nowhere near it at the moment, so I think I'm fine going for the Galvanic Blast onto the Ragavan. And then how's about the Allosaurus Shepherd? Pretty useless in this matchup, so it probably eats a Skull Clamp here, I think. Just hope that our opponent doesn't get into another hasty creature, although Minsk is getting pretty high up there. So draw two with the Skull Clamp, gets us into more lands, and with the uh, additional mana that we've got available to us, that can go onto the Boo. Make sure to plus onto the Boo. That is now an 8-6, and we'll whack our opponent for a bunch. Probably looking at drawing cards with it next turn. Seeing a Shinka in play once again. Alright, our opponents... Um, Obviously struggling here, either doesn't want to play anymore or the client's bugging out for him or something. Had his mana tap for ages and then tapped another mana and yeah, doesn't seem to be doing anything. Okay, I'm asking for strong decks, so we'll try again. Um, yeah, again, got a turn 2 Minsk, as we're always aiming for. And there we see a Grim Monolith, so pretty confident in our ability to get down the Minsk and Boo here. We'll crack this for the Tiger as ever. Yeah, that can be an Elvish Mystic for us. Worried about artifact removal from my opponent, so I'll hold on to the Lotus Petal. And they might also play around the fact that we're only going to have three mana next turn. Likely just seen their commander though. No, it is a Sky Diamond. That is fine with me. Wouldn't have thought that I'd see a Sky Diamond against a powerful deck, but we'll just assume that our opponent read the message in the lobby. Uh, shock down the Stomping Ground. Play at the Lotus Petal, and that is a Minsk and Boo for us. And as ever, plus counters onto the Boo, and off we go. And there we see a Venser, Shaper Savant, and that obviously bounced our commander, so luckily for us we get into a land, so yeah, we can just recast our commander here, I think. Whilst our opponent is out of mana, just hope that we don't see any Force of Will or anything like that, and we do not, not going to make a Boo. But we are going to put the plus counters on the Boo and send that up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. So if they want to swing in the Venser, they can do. Obviously haven't had any command attacks added to the Minsk yet. Probably tick up on the Minsk again next turn and use the uh, use that turn to get out some more mana. Seeing as how we took a turn off previously. There's a Mystify Maze, that's a good answer against the Boo. Do have a Beast Within for that though. And a Kaiser Roiling Chaser into play now. And just deciding to hold back with four cards in hand. 
Okay, a rootbound crag available to us. So we've got a chance to sacrifice the boo here. But I think we're doing alright so far. So let's just go for another plus onto boo. See if they've got any bounce or anything that they want to use. Next turn we're likely sacrificing it. If we have our minsk in play still. And they just take a hit for 10. So drop a land. We'll get down the grim monolith. See if they want to counter that. They are holding up priority. So we're activating the Kazer now, which they could have done in response to a Chain Lightning anyway. And that is a rewind. So untaps the lands, it does not untap the Kazer. Go for a Talisman as well. And we'll still be able to go Chain Lightning if they counter the Talisman, but they don't counter that anyway. So Chain Lightning onto their commander. They don't have double red for it. And didn't have any more counter magic apparently, so that is four mana that is going to get swallowed up from them next turn. If they uh, want to get down their commander again. Vents are not swinging in at the Minsk. Alright, let's make some suboptimal plays here. I'm going to swing in with the Boo and force them to use that Mystifying Maze. Just because we're not getting any full games in here. So we'll give our opponent a chance as patronising as it is. Okay, so the Exile with the Mystifying Maze. Get rid of that massive Boo. And now this gives us a chance to get down the Vorinclex without any counter magic. We will plus on the Minsk. Dump a bunch of plus counters on the Voring Clex. So that is now a 12-12 with Trample and Haste. And we'll pass at that. Going to make a boo at the beginning of our next upkeep. The Minsk sitting at a 7-7 at the moment. Or a 7 loyalty Planeswalker that is. Brainstorm from our opponent. And throwing out a Grand Coliseum. And now they're getting down their Kazer again. So four cards in hand and not going to be able to cast any instants or sorceries I don't think. So our commander triggers, and yeah, they scoop anyway. Well, I tried to make the suboptimal plays, but our opponent sees the writing on the wall regardless. Uh, it could be another six counters on this, so that would be an 18-18. Obviously, they're on very little life at this point, and we can remove this thing whenever we want with a beast within. Uh, drawing into a Blasphemous Act this turn. If we start piling counters on the boo, could have been, well, as usual... A bunch of removal and mana. Anyway, there we are. Hopefully you all enjoyed the deck. The list is in the description as ever. Pretty powerful one for 1v1. If you want to see more from it, then let me know. Massive thank you to the patrons as ever. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.